Hey friends, Pastor Randy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. Great to be with you today. Hope you are doing great on this beautiful Wednesday. A little bit late recording time for me today. Been a very, very full day, but uh, but blessed. So uh, good to be with you. We're going to pick back up where we left off yesterday. We did a little introduction yesterday about five things to watch for. We started building this out of the scripture taken from 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul is talking about different time. And when the time would come that sound teaching would no longer be heard, uh, that sound teaching would no longer be listened to, but rather people would turn to myths and fables and all kinds of different things. He said, but watch, but watch in everything and hang on in there. Keep doing what you're doing. One of the things that really stands out to me and the reason I want to do this study is those two words, but watch. As I shared yesterday, we, we are a, a group, a people, whatever we want to call, you know, whatever we call it, species, that we watch stuff. We watch, we watch pretty much everything. We watch each other. We watch TV. We watch our watch. We watch traffic. All these different things. I want us to look at the, the concept of watching our will. What are you talking about, Pastor? That's going to be the first part of this long series. This one's going to take a while because these five things are definitely broken down into components. And obviously, we try to keep these lessons a little short here. Uh, so it'll take a little while to get that. Paul here is talking about a time when sound teaching will no longer be heard. What I want to ask is, is it, is it, is it no longer heard or is it no longer offered? Is it offered or no longer listened to? Many today, we find a we find a multitude of teaching today, friends. Some of it's right, and some of it is very, very wrong. Now, that is not just me being critical just to be a critic, or that is not in any way trying to put a light on me to say that I know everything because some of these folks have been around for a whole lot longer than I have. But we see the word sound here. Why does that matter? Sound teaching. Some versions even use the word doctrine, which is, again, another word for uh, a, a, a variation of teaching. Why does that matter? When I talk about the concept of our will, see, if I personally believe something, whatever it might be, my intention, my will, if you will, is to get you to believe it. That, that's when we begin to step over the realm of it being the things of God and rather being the things of man, humanity, people. While there is true that many people today don't want to hear the truth anymore, that, that's absolutely true. And, and in the process of that, they turn to things that offer them, as Paul here says, things that itch your ears. In other words, things that go along more so with what you want to hear. Well, that's true, because when people hear what they want to hear, that's a that's a comfort. A teacher begins to have some level of um, a pride if you don't be careful, because you want to hear that you're right. And once that has been embraced, that you're right, then what are you going to continue to do? You're going to use those same methods to continue that level of popularity or to continue that level of notoriety or fame or whatever you want to call it. I see it all the time. There's one particular person in general that, again, I personally don't care for. I don't because I don't think they teach the truth. They have their version of the truth. And again, that's my opinion, so I'm not naming names. But when this person is so highly revered for their great intellect and their great... Uh, exposition and all the things that they say and they stand in this high platform above everybody else and have people line up to ask them questions that's arrogant and the problem with that is then you begin to assert your will over God's will and the problem with that is then well people really like what I'm telling them so therefore I'm going to keep doing that Paul here it uses a lot of different words in this passage and a lot of warnings about things to come and 
But again, we look at that word, but watch. But watch out for what you're doing. Do the work of the evangelist and full proof your ministry. Make sure that what you're doing, make sure that what you're saying is of God and not of you. Our will, in other words, the way that I want it. That is something we wrestle with from the time that we're small, okay? Because we always want our way, right? That, that's kind of human nature. Like I said, we, we are, we are a, a group, a people, uh, um, whatever you want to call us, that we watch stuff. We watch stuff all the time. We watch, again, I use the examples of TV and movies and sports things. We watch traffic, whatever, all these different things. But one of the things that I think that we have to be very, very careful with, again, is our will. And Paul here said, be mindful of that because it can get in the way. Especially when we begin, when we begin to have effect and influence on others. And every believer should. I don't just say that to the pastor. I don't just say that to the teacher or the leader. But every believer should have an impact on others. But we need to be careful that we don't assert our will over the will of God. Because what we do can have absolutely, can absolutely have a mighty effect on what people think, on what people do, how they see Christ versus how they see the world. The, the, the need to being able to see the difference because if one says, well, wait a minute, you're no different than anybody else. Now, while we can argue that point that, well, we don't want to be seen as different in the sense of a, uh, I'm better than you or snooty, and everybody, nobody should desire to be seen that way, but we should absolutely desire to be seen different. Because Jesus said, you are no longer of the world, for I have chosen you out of the world. Well, what does that mean? You don't act like that anymore. I'm not better than you. I'm not better than anybody. But I live different because I have a different level of conviction because I have Christ living within me, and he's showing me it's his will, not mine. Because that's what advances the kingdom of God. And that's what ultimately advances my life, which allows me to be a credible witness versus just a bundle of words. We have a responsibility to those that are listening. We have a responsibility to those that are watching. Because I assure you, as much as you may watch things, you're being watched too. And I talked about that yesterday, not in the creepy big brother kind of way, but in, and that's true too. But God is, God is mindful and cares about our witness because, as I've said in many of the other studies that I've done, we are a reflection of the image of God because that's how we were created. He has given every one of us, every one of us, a task, a job, if you will, and that is to go forth and show Him to others. Tell others about Him. And in order to do that, in order to complete that, we have to be watchful along the way that I'm not showing them me rather than showing them him. So again, we need to be mindful of our will because sometimes we begin to assert that quickly. It just kind of gets in the way. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, it very quickly says this, Then I said, See, it is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. We go back further in the Old Testament in the book of Psalms, and we see in chapter 40 and verse 8, it is written, I delight to do your will, O God, and your instruction is deep within me. We live in a time, and we're going to wrap things up with this part today, we live in a time of great selfishness. Many, many around us insist on doing things their way, Exist, insist on exerting their will regardless of the consequence. I see it all the time. I know people this way and they will lie and exaggerate and do all kinds of things to get people to believe stuff. In other words, they're exerting their will over the truth because they don't want anybody to hear the truth. And while, yes, indeed, we live in a time where the truth is often 
hated without a question, that doesn't remove the need for the truth. Because as Jesus said, the truth will make you free. We'll pick back up on that tomorrow, Lord willing. We'll get back here together uh, tomorrow and record the next episode of Make It a Simple. I hope this has been a blessing to you and intrigued you to say, man, what is this guy talking about? I want to hear more. You'll get that tomorrow right here at Making It Simple.